My name is John Lemus. This show is the right place. Today we're going to have a great show. We have uh, Shannon Grove, Assemblyman from the 34th District. We're going to talk about a few things that she's concerned about. I don't want you to go away because this is going to be a good one. Hold on. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the right place. I'm here with uh, Shannon Grove uh, from 34th District. Shannon, thank you so much for coming in. I know you're a very, very busy person. And oh, my pleasure. To take a little slice out of your time here is a big deal for us down here in this little San Benito County. My pleasure. Absolutely yeah. my pleasure. What I want to know is some of the main things you're working on and what you think are some priorities, maybe your top three or whatever you think is going on that we should know about. You know, thanks for asking. I um, I travel around the straight state and I try to educate people on uh, what's really happening in the state capitol. I've never been in politics before. I'm the first female veteran that's ever served on the state of Stimley floor. And, um, you know, some of the things that we need to worry about is, is land grabs. We've got SB 375 of 2008, which identifies property as uh, sustainable communities and um, infill for Agenda 21. Sure. And it says that if you're not 20 units per acre, a half a mile from transit, then you're light and inefficient land use and you should pay more taxes. There's also language that associates with that that says the uh, land ownership is a concentration and accumulation of wealth and therefore creates social injustice. If that doesn't scare somebody into standing up and put a flag in the ground to fight liberalism and what's going on in our country, it, it absolutely should. Well, it should scare the hell out of anybody in San Benito County, I'll tell you that, because we're rural and there's a lot of landowners here. Absolutely. So, yes, I'm concerned about that. And, and what is the solution to that? What are we doing to fight that? You know, I think as, as I go around the state, you say San Benito County is a conservative pocket. There are conservative remnants throughout this state. And um, as I go around the state and I talk, there is a, there are a lot of people just like San Benito County in other parts of the state, including South Bay of San Francisco. So we need to come together because if you take the Colorado recall, for instance, those two guys, a right. plumber and a small business owner, got together and worked after hours and, and were activists, per se, and recalled two of the most powerful people in the state Senate. One was the Senate pro tem, and they're gone. And they went up against Obama's get out the boat um, machine and Clinton's robo calls and they still worked hard in a grassroots effort and they made a difference and people in these community areas that are so tired and so fed up with their rights being infringed upon with their land ownership rights being infringed upon with everything that's going on in the state and the federal government you can take a stand the most powerful person in the government is you and the people like that are listening to the show well and, and every show I I tell people get involved get involved locally get involved with your city county and state because if you don't you're going to look around one day and say what the heck happened here how did we get here exactly how did this happened and it's your fault exactly if you don't get in and find out what's happening you can't do anything about it and if you say if you do, if you know about it and don't do anything about it, that's even worse so we can't completely depend on people like you to go in there and straighten everything out. We have to do, go out there and do it ourselves. I fight for conservative values and constitutional pr principles with every breath on that assembly floor in those committees and where I go and speak. But we can't do it without you guys. You guys, the, the people that watch this show, the people that are the remnant part of the state, we've got to participate. It's, it's our land. It's, it's our rights. You know, our unalienable rights given to us by God. It's, it's our privilege to be United States citizens, and we've got to fight for our government, or for, against our government, for our rights. Correct. I'd like to get in a little bit before the show. Uh, one of the local politicians was talking to me about this uh, uh, delivering babies thing. The, the nursing oh, and the like governor that. signed, it was AB 154, and what it does is it allows uh, midwives and physicians' assistants perform abortions. Um, you know, they, they passed laws up there that make no sense. They allowed primary care clinics to perform abortions, and then they realized that primary care clinics didn't meet the standards for surgery centers and having admittance to hospitals and things like that, so they had to pass another piece of legislation to reduce the building code for primary care clinics so they could perform abortions. And then they're saying that um, physicians and midwives can perform abortions, but, you know, in rural areas, and they're calling it hiding behind women's access to care, 
Um, and that's just a ridiculous statement because why should somebody in a rural community have less medical services um, or less quality of medical care mm. than somebody in a city or a m m large met metropolitan area? Um, to say that women in rural areas don't deserve that quality of health care, um, I'm pro-life. You know, I'm pro-life under a constitutional issue and under a faith issue. The Constitution says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. you got to start with life. Uh, from a faith issue, it says baby leaped in the womb. It doesn't say fetus. It doesn't say tissue. It says baby. Absolutely. But if you're going to argue the point on medical care, why should rural communities have a lower standard of medical care for women um, than metropolitan areas? Yeah, why should they? What about the... Um, I don't speak brownies, so I, don't, I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> what about the transgender thing? Well, how do you think about that? You know, um, what are we doing about it? The yes. there is a specifically the AB twelve sixty six is a bill the governor signed that allows um, transgender students that are struggling with their transgender identity to be able to um, have full access to um, uh, sports, sporting teams, and use of facilities, um, common use of facilities. It doesn't spe specify in the bill that it has to be a transgender student. It just says any student. It says any pupil. It doesn't say transgender pupil. It says any pupil who identifies himself as a, um, a individual that is different from what's on their permanent record. Meaning if, if a young boy feels feminine and it says he's a boy on his permanent record but he actually feels like he's a female, that individual will have use to the female showers you know, everything from K through 12 education. I think our biggest problem is going to be in high school uh, with showers, locker rooms, bathrooms, and things like that. The argument on the other side of the aisle is um, the argument that this bill will stop bullying. Um, I think this bill is a cruel joke to the people who are really struggling with transgender issues. Because if you are a young boy and you believe you're a girl and you're in the girl's locker room and you have male body parts and you're in the shower, that is not going to stop bullying. It's just going to enhance it. And I can't even imagine inciting other violent crimes that could possibly happen if this takes place. Well, my uh, children are grown, but if I had a 14, 15 year old girl in high school, I'd I don't know what I'd do. And it actually covers private schools too, I think. It does. You can go on a Pacific Justice Institute website and you can download a, um, a form and check off. It's a checkoff form where you expect privacy for your student. And then you can submit that to your school and the administrators are required to make sure your student has privacy in those areas. You can also um, sign a petition that's put forth by the Family Resource Institute, uh, privacyforallstudents.com, and you can download a petition and sign that petition, and hopefully we can gather enough signatures to put it on the ballot, because this is not just a Republican or conservative issue. Um, I know Democrat parents that don't want their children showering Absolutely. in opposite sex, so this will cross party lines. See, that's another thing. How did this thing get all the way through to the governor to get signed without anybody knowing about it? because we don't have media like you guys are doing here. We have media, I often tell a story about, um, again, it's a joke, right, when you go into it. I tell this story sometimes and some people go, oh, is that true? Um, but this family took this little girl to the, to the um, zoo and a lion grabbed the little girl and all this media attention came and it's real dramatic and this guy rides up on his motorcycle, he pummels the lion, grabs the little girl, gives it back to the, the family and the media is like, oh my God, that's the most courageous thing I've ever seen and I'm, I'm gonna write about this. He says, who are you? And he goes, I'm a retired Marine Corps veteran going to a Republican National Convention. So the next day the guy opens the newspaper and sure enough the reporter wrote about it. And it says, Republican Marine Corps veteran assaults South African immigrant and steals his lunch. <laughs> because media does not, not tell the truth. truth. They twist it all. Absolutely. But go to gun bills, I know somebody wanted me to talk about gun bills. And um, these gun bills, you know, there's, there's truth that we, you and I know, and then there's Sacramento truth. Jerry Brown has three days to veto these gun bills. If he does not veto these gun bills, then they automatically become law. And then he will run around on his campaign trail and he will say, I never veto or signed a bill violating your Second Amendment rights, which is true, he never signed it, but by not vetoing it, he allowed it to come lo become law. Right. Well, we already have some of the strongest gun laws in the United States right here in California. Mm -hmm. You know, we only have a 10, ten uh, shell clip, and uh, a lot of guns that are very small guns, uh, carry uh, carry weapons, are outlawed here. Um, so I don't, we don't need any more gun laws. 
We don't. Like a Glock, a Glock 27 is permissible, but a Glock fourth generation is not. Why? There's no difference other than one's a little bit more right. flashier, but you have, a, you know, it's not on a list. And, you know, what's absurd about gun bills is that people that don't anything about weapons are passing laws on gun bills. You have a 223 basic wood ranch rifle. It's got a 223 round. And then you have a black rifle with a pistol grip. It's 223 round, but one of them is legal and one of them is not. Why? Because it's very, very scary is what I say. It's real scary. Yeah. You know, and, but the kill capacity is the same. <coughs> yeah, I have a, a GSD uh, AK-47. But, and it looks like an AK-47, but it's a 22. But it's a 22, yeah, so it's, it's legal. Look, yeah, it's legal. But it looks exactly like an AK-47. If I brought it in, you think I had an AK-47. So it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that if it's black and has a pistol grip, it's automatically an assault weapon. Right. When it has the same kill capacity as your grandpa's ranch rifle on a 223 round. That's right. It's just nuts. It's amazing. Jen, we're going to take a break. You got it. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to The Right Place. I'm here with Shannon Grove. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of things. Shannon, I, again, I appreciate you being on the show. And we were talking a little bit about cap and trade and a couple other items uh, during the break. Give us a little input on what's going on there. You know, what happens in the majority party legislature is that in the middle of the night, they just slide things into the budget process. Things like... Um, you know, things that are affect us economically, like we were just talking about cap and trade, they passed in that all cap and trade revenues um, through WCI Inc., which is the Western Climate Initiative, all the revenues collected under cap and trade for um, the, the process that you go to buy your carbon credits to operate in the state of California is all housed in Delaware. They put that in the last minute through in the budget process. Uh, why housed in Delaware? Because it's um, not available to California Open Records Act. So citizens of California have no right to know. The government is saying you have no right to know wh how much money comes in, what it's being spent on, and how it's being taken care of, and who's getting it. And um, so that was in there. I ran a piece of legislation to try to reverse that and bring it back to California, and it died in committee because they don't want that to be transparent. Sure. And then this year, on this budget that we've been able to find, because um, you have to go through it real fine to look at little things that they do. This year we found two things that were really significant, one more than the other. Um, Staples Center, the Staples Center, the Honda Center. Mm -hmm. So the Honda Center had terminated its contract with its union concessionaire, because it was over, and so they hired a non-union contractor. So the unions went to the California State Legislature, who they own, the unions own the Democrats in the, sure. in the supermajority party, and they passed a, a piece of the budget bill that has nothing to do with um, the, sta the Honda Center, which is like the Staples Center. So it has nothing to do with that. And they said that you have to renegotiate your contract with the uh, union concessionaire. So they required in the budget bill a private contractor, a private business enterprise, to renegotiate its contract with the, um, with the union. That, huh? Because the unions, the unions own the California State Legislature Democrats. They own them, they own them lock, stock, and barrel. The other thing that happened that they snuck in is, um, has to do with, I think, election corruption. So um, provisional ballots are on the rise, and the ROB, or Register of Voters Office, will validate a signature on a provisional ballot. So somebody comes in and goes, I'm not on the list, but I'm going to vote provisional. So they sign saying that they're going to vote, and then the ROV, the Register of Voters Office, will compare that signature that was signed on the ballot and cast to the signature on file for, the, for when they filed to vote, you know, when they registered to vote. They've eliminated all funding and not requiring the validation of signatures for the, for the um, provisional ballots now. So once those provisional ballots are cast, they'll just count them automatically without any validation. No checking. No checking. So people could come and vote provisional, which I, I, I've watched the, the voting at these uh, voting booths, and there are people that come in there that at the last minute want to vote provisional. And they won't have any validation process whatsoever. It's, 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 it's tyranny, it's government run amok is what it is. You have um, things like 28% uh, increases in welfare grants. What, what private person in the private sector got a 28% increase? And there's a 28% over a period of time for welfare increases. Not to mention that they think that in the Democrat supermajority thinks that you know Californians aren't participating in the food stamp or CalFresh program, CalFresh. Oh, yeah. So you know what they're doing? You're gonna self-certify. 
So you just walk in, I've got five kids I'm going to feed, sign your name, self-certify, bam, here's your food stamps, or CalFresh. I still have to get politically correct. I'm not yet, but anyway. Wow. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, well, I, I, on the news they were saying that California had less food stamp recipients than any other state. And I was, you know, for California to be that way, you go, what? You know? So now they're trying to increase it by self-certification. Yeah, they're saying, wait a minute, we can't. We have to have more than everybody else, right? So <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we measure success on people that get off welfare and get off food stamps by getting a job and um, providing for their family through working? And, you know, why does it have to be measured on how many people? They measure success on how many people are dependent on government. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they want you dependent on government. You know, Santa Claus, big time Santa Claus. Well, you know, we fled um, England and came here because yeah. we were in a bondage. Right. And, um, you know, that created spiritual strength. And then spiritual strength creates, you know, a way to provide and have resources and money. And then, um, you know, it creates liberty and all these things. And now we're back through the whole process where we're in complacency, back to dependency and almost to bondage. And um, I, I shared with you that I was in the military. I served in um, 1989 when the wall came down between East and West Berlin. Wow. And when they came through the wall, you could see people delighted and overwhelmed with the freedom that they had just gotten back just gotten back and Ronald Reagan used to say that we're one generation away from losing our freedoms we're one election away from, away from losing our freedoms just one election away and if we don't take that seriously um, we need a Reagan revolution we need a Reagan revolution yeah I don't know how we pull it off you know we have a, a, a lot of youth I watched these interviews with some of the youth at these colleges and half of them don't have a clue the other half don't care but we've got to go, you know, Republicans, they tout that they go to Republican women and, you know, conservative talk show hosts. You know, uh, we spent just, uh, you know, last night we were in Berkeley, 700 and something college students. And we, for 40 minutes, we shared a solid, hardcore, liberty, conservative message about activism and how to, you know, how to approach that side. And from a conservative standpoint, and then we took 20 minutes of questions and answers. And then after it was over, we had an abundant amount of students come up to the stage and really want to engage with us on, not hostile or anything, just really want to engage with us on conservative values. And they, they liked what we had to say. And then there was an, another group of us that went to um, pizza later on, and um, we talked again. And you have to understand that even though Berkeley is a very liberal campus, and it's an indoctrinated campus, yeah. There are a large group of individuals there that really stand up and put a flag in the ground. They had that um, that issue on um, uh, discrimination, or not discrimination, but um, where they had a bill last session, they had a bill and it was like, if you're white, you'll pay so much for college, and if you're Latino, you'll pay lower amount, and if you're black, you'll pay a lower amount, and a woman, they had that. So what do these Berkeley college students do? They have a cupcake sale. If you're white, you're paying $2. If you're Latino, you're paying a buck fifty. If you're black, you're paying a dollar, you know, and so on and down the line. Right. And it showed the ridiculous absurdness of that bill. And I think with what you guys are doing here, conservative radio, conservative television, there are remnants of you all over this state. The Tea Party Caucus at the convention, it was the most packed room of the convention. They were packed wall to wall in, you know, standing room only. And then the hallway went out and they must have had additional 75 people flooding out in the hallway. It is time and people are acting. Well, you know the Tea Party is becoming effective when the liberals are just screaming that they hate the Tea Party and that everything's blamed on the Tea Party. When they start all that rhetoric, you know somebody's doing some good somewhere. And when the Tea Party is activated and all they can come at you or us as Tea Party people with or conservative individuals are personal attacks. What, it, what were they calling us? What was Harry Reid calling us? Um, you know, uh, tea baggers, tea baggers yeah. and anarchists and right. all of this stuff. If they can't debate us on the issues and all they can do is call names or throw well, sand in the that's sandbox, why that, yeah. that's why they do that. So you're, th we're hitting a nerve. And so I say, praise God, continue to hit the nerve. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're going to take another quick break. Okay. We're going to come back, and I'm going to ask you about your uh, next election and your re-election. Okay. If you're going to go farther, if you're going to be a governor. Or <laughs> we'll be right back. Hi there. You just heard from Assemblywoman Shannon Grove from the 34th Assembly District. And you're going to hear some more from her after this segment. But I'm Rob Bernoski, and I am your local chairman of the Republican Party. And I'm here to tell you that 
this woman from the Central Valley knows exactly what she's talking about. They discussed a lot of issues and they're gonna discuss others at the state level. And I'm here to tell you, here in San Benito County, we can make a difference like Shannon Grove can. If you feel that your water rates are too high, if you feel like you're getting taxed and feed to death, if you're frustrated that we don't have enough sheriff's deputies in this town, and that when you go to county offices uh, after one o'clock, they may not be open, it's time for a change. And we can bring about that change by voting the correct way. Vote for responsible Republican elected candidates that you can depend on to build, watch out for your interest and be good stewards of your money. You can do that by joining the Republican Party, either as registering as a Republican, joining our central committee, and just getting involved in many of the activities that we do. Please contact me by email at chair at sbcrepublicans.com or by telephone at 801-5823 or visit our website at sbcrepublicans.com. We can make a difference. Inch by inch, it's a cinch. We need to get change here so that we can begin to, to thrive and do a better job of governing ourselves. Thank you very much. I'm with uh, Shannon Grove. Shannon, I want to talk a little bit about you right now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, when are you coming up for a re-election? Uh, I run again in June. In June? Yes. So tell us, and then uh, obviously you're going to win that, right? Well, I would, I hope so. I would hope my my district you, would send me back. Do you have an opponent? Uh, not yet. Yeah, so they're all scared of you, in other words. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I do have a lot of uh, people in the district that support me. Yeah. And you, the 34th district? 34th Assembly District, it is uh, very conservative. It is, um, when I talk to other uh, places in the state and even other states, I say, you know, I represent Kern County, which is uh, what Kern County is to the state of California, Texas is to the nation. Really? Yes, very conservative county. Wow, that, and how many, how big a county is it? I mean, how many people? It's, it's fairly large, it's fairly large. I have all of Kern County. I have uh, small bits of San Bernardino County and small bits of Inyo County. Wow. And um, you're married, have children? I am married. I have five grown children and three grandchildren. And I just had uh, my, our oldest daughter gave us a grandbaby, Sawyer Rose, just uh, on the 29th, just a few weeks well, ago. congratulations. Thanks. And you're a horse owner? Horse owner, love to ride. Um, I'm only in heels when I have to do this job. Otherwise, I'm in my, you know, my ropers and boots. And I love to ride. My husband rides. All of our kids team rope. And um, I was raised by a single mom. I don't have a college degree. I'm probably one of the only members of the state assembly that is not uh, does not have a college degree. I um, am <laughs> school of hard knocks. Yeah, right. yeah right. school of hard knocks. Uh, and um, I've served in the United States military at headquarters company Fifth Court Frankfurt Germany United Thank States Army. Service. Thank you. And um, I'm a small business owner. And so I've been in this state in spite of this state. Uh, surviving as a small business owner in spite of the state for 20 years now. God bless you, and you're going to Israel tomorrow. I am leaving to go to Israel tomorrow. It'll be my first trip to Israel, and uh, my husband and I are going with a gentleman called named David Lane, who organizes all pastors and pews events to try to get the evangelicals to vote. You know, 39% of ev evangelicals vote, and if we could capture that vote for conservative, uh, you know, individuals in office, right. uh, we could shift this state and this nation. You know, there are several people that, that believe that, that uh, to get those Christians out. I was always amazed that I think last election, 58% of the Catholics voted for Obama, you know, which doesn't make a bit of sense. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all. And, you know, uh, when you look at the Catholic Church now as fighting, you know, the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, and, um, you know, most, most Catholics line up with conservative values. Most Latinos line up with conservative values. Right. Uh, they believe and think the way we are, but I was talking to one of my Latino friends, and she goes, Shannon, you just don't get it. You're born Latino, you're born Democrat, you're born Catholic. And I said, but you need to look at the vote and how the vote is affecting you as an individual. And um, most Catholics will line up with the conservative values that Republicans hold. Well, I was raised pretty much the same way. I was Portuguese. And Portuguese people were all Catholics, raised as Catholics. I right. went through catechism and communion and confirmation and all that stuff. 
Uh, I'm not a Catholic anymore, but the same that that's true. You get into that system, you just don't get out of it. And as being a Democrat, my dad was a Democrat till he was 70 or something, you know. So. And it's the same with um, Sikhs. You know, I, I went to an um, uh, immigration service ceremony where people were coming into the United States legally and citizens, and there was a big tent, and it said, Dem Sikhs for, you know, Democrats Sikhs or Sikhs for Democrats. And, and I went over and talked to him, and I said, you know, oh, you must be different than my Sikhs, that I because I represent a large Sikh, Sikh population. You know, they don't like abortion. They, they think it's an abomination to God. The LGBT right. issue is not something that they agree with. And he goes, oh, no, we don't, we don't agree with that either. I said, then why are you supporting a party that pushes that as their primary agenda? You guys are entrepreneurial. You're farmers. You're growers. Do you have issues with the unions? Oh, yes, all the time. Well, then why do you support a party that is, you know, is, is in bed with the caters unions? Them. Yeah, and caters to them. Or I said in bed with them. But... Um, and they said, oh, my gosh, you know, and, and it makes them question that. And that's like I said, like going to Berkeley, we've just got to get out and start going to places and start conveying a message of conservative values because people do agree with us. It's just that the Democrats wrap it up in a pretty package and, you know, throw a ribbon around it and, and they vote for them. And it's just um, those votes are destroying our state. Senna, I appreciate everything you do and I appreciate you coming in. God bless you. Thank you. And have a good trip. Oh, thank you. See you next time. Thank you for watching The Right Place. Uh, we had a great show today with Shannon Groves. I, and I'm going to tell you again, please get involved locally in your committee in politics. Find out who your supervisors are. Find out who your city council people are. Find out who your local assembly people are and senators. Uh, get busy. Uh, this We're under attack here as conservatives in this state. And I know a lot of people have moved out of this state just to get away from the things that are happening here. But we're going to stay here and fight. I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you and God bless America.